Hello and welcome to the Show You and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. When you're gambling with life, always bet on silver. <laughs> Yay. Yay? I guess. Man. Also joining us today is Tatera. This show is obviously rigged. I paid a couple of bits betting that Silver would say that last week's episode was a great episode, but he didn't. He said it was decent. This is rigged, I tell you. Hey, come on, man. Just give him a chance. You, you'll never know what Silver would say. It's because the house oh. always wins. Says the one who rigs the chocolate chip cookies. It's a great <laughs> house of chocolate chips. It's Max and Max here. But hey, dude. In this episode, we are going to review issue 3 of the IDW comic of Nightmare Nights. Yay. So, let's see if I can get the summarization for this one. <clears throat> uh, give me a second. Okay. Uh, in this issue, Princess Luna and her team of former villains infiltrate Princess Ares Casino. Or at least they try to. So, questions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, there's always an issue where everything's meant to go wrong to set up the climax of the later issues. This one is basically a spectacle in the quote-unquote team falling apart almost when they get in the door. <laughs> so true. And that's about the long and the short of it, really. It's, it's, it's an issue where things go wrong, and it's more a spectacle of how they go wrong. True that, true that, true that. And Tara, what about you? I mean, you can't really say much. At first, I thought it was going to be, like, a very interesting one, but and then after, later on, it's like, oh, yeah, it's like one of these where, you know, usually heist, they plan something, and then later on, the team got, this, everything starts going bad. You know, the usual stuff. Can't really say much, but I did enjoy it, though. Especially the art. And as for me, this episode was fun. Uh, sorry, <laughs> comic issue. Yeah, it, it sets up the quote-unquote chaos that will happen because uh, if you're having a team dynamic where they're not really a team but are forced into so hijinks will ensue and like Silver mentioned right out of the gate the red and powerful Roxy is just no way to be seen but anywho that's for later on if you guys have not read the comic pause here and go do so Welcome back. I hope you enjoy reading the comics because yeah, it's a lot of fun. So will we continue on the story with our heroes, Princess Luna and her gang, trying to infiltrate the casino. But in the previous episode, we discovered that she was met with a lot of bad guys. And in this one, Princess Luna decides to pull out. But Kepper just says, nah, man, we signed up for this and we know what we're getting ourselves into. So let's just continue with the plan. So as they continue on discussing how they're going to do stuff, Trixie founds a wheel of magic. And they on the wheel, there's a lot of great uh, magical trinkets. And one of them is the Eye of Agamotto, and Trixie really, really wants it. I think she wants the Alicorn Amulet. She's fallen off the wagon. Alicorn. Oh, there it is, again. Okay. So, anywho, Trixie wants to borrow 100 bits from Princess Luna just to try and get a chance to win something. But you know what? When you take a look-see at the wheel, there's no duds, I guess, because everything there is... Kind of awesome, I guess. Except that it's all fake. Yeah, true. I mean, you're in a casino full of villains. So, Tempest walks up to the cashier. I won't say cashier. Who would you call it? What would you call it? The the wheel operator? Yeah. There's a specific name for those kind of people? Swindlers. <laughs> I won't say that. But anywho, um, Tempest goes up to the attendant and says that he is a cheater and steal our money. And before things could settle down, she blasts the wheel and put a stop to Trixie and her wants. And technically, Tempest was meant to be the distraction, the muscle. And well, uh, it seems that she did her job a little too well because they called security on them and... 
trouble is in coming. Trouble is coming before I reveal. You know what? I'm going to reveal the trouble. Um, the trouble is Daybreaker, Princess Celestia's evil version. And before I move on, I'm going to pause here. So, guys, what do you think? Silver? Well, I have to correct. Uh, Tempest is the muscle. She's meant to be there if a fight breaks out. In a way, she over, I think she overstepped her bounds and her role. Trixie was meant to be the distraction, but funny enough, she got distracted. Whoopsie. Mm. The big thing working against Luna and her knights is the simple fact that this, they've had no time to prepare to get to know one another to form anything more than the basic fundamentals of a plan. I mean, uh, you know, Rocket Raccoon is off to the side laughing at that is the most genuine laugh. That is not a plan barely a percent of a plan <laughs> they've basically got no time to really figure each other out learn to play off one another learn one another's strengths and weaknesses this is pure improv i can understand why luna w- almost wanted to back out as soon as they got in the door and it, funny enough it's capper who's probably the most affectionate and friendly of the troop it's capper who encourages her to keep going and uh Basically, he's he's their moral support, which is kind of funny given what we we saw of him in the movie. <laughs> the boy has changed his life around quite a bit, and Stygian is the one insisting on sticking to the plan, mostly because it's his plan. I think he feels a very personal stake in this. Uh, I guess, I guess. But in all honesty, when things go awry and improv, um, I won't say improv is the right word. Uh, winging it. There's another word for it. Improvisation. Uh, uh, going by by instincts. Yes. If you're going, yeah, that's improvisation. Seat, going by the seat of your pants. Yeah, improvisation is one, but mostly used for, yeah, improvisation. Yes, thank you. My bad. <laughs> so yeah, if you're going to go with improvisation, you should go with the flow and see how it goes. Sticking to plans usually don't work, and so on. No plan survives the first encounter engagement. Oh, true that. Anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? Well, I actually do like too how uh, Luna's thinking of you know I'm putting you all in danger. We should probably call this off. And you think that someone else like Tempest would be like, "Hey, you brought us into this," but no, it's Capper. Usually, Capper's the swindler. He's the one that tries to trick people into something. But no, Capper is like, "No, you, we're okay with this. We signed up for this," and. And all of a sudden, because, you know, all these characters, they, I guess, used to be villains. And so, you know, once Trixie sees the wheel, he's like, I want to win that Alicorn Amulet so I can exact revenge. It's like, yeah, it's still a villain. But while this is going on, I do like how we got some more little hidden background characters, like how we have Wallflower from Equestria Girls. Now she's a pony in this. (laughs) And we got... um. Another Equestria Girls reference. I forget the name, though, of this one. Daisy. Gloriosa from... Daisy? Yeah. That's it. Glori- <laughs> Gloriosa, I think. Yeah, I think that's yes. it. Gloriosa. And I like how they just add all these uh, little things in the background. Because I always keep an eye out for those things. Yep, 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 yep. But then it's from here, after Tempest destroys the wheel, and all of a sudden you see Daybreak, it's like, okay, now here's where things start to go bad, and everyone starts getting separated. Because you know what's going to happen. Oh, yep, yep. And with that, let's carry on because uh, Tempest tells the group to go on without her because she's going to open a can of whoop-ass on Daybreaker. And we have a two-page spread, which is really awesome. Well done. But you have to turn it on, but you have to turn it on its side, which is not. <laughs> okay, seriously, do you have to do that? I believe so. Because I know you're quoting Ninkara right now because <laughs> that always seems to happen on his show. But are you sure? I'm Actually, I'm not. I, I'm trying to recall. I feel like there was a 2 prayed spread around this time that you had to turn on its side to view. I don't think so. It's this and, one because this one seems pretty good. Like, it's left okay. and right. I withdraw my previous quote. Me. Hmm. But anywho... While Tempest is battling Daybreaker, which is really awesome and I would love to see how it goes, but we don't have the chance because the rest of the crew use that as a distraction to get to the throne room. And suddenly, Capper is stopped by the Diamond Dogs and somehow he's getting 
uh, pummeled by the dogs. Pummel, not right. Harass. Yeah, harass. But the smack thing. Oh, I think Trixie came in to the rescue then. Rolled up newspaper. Yeah, because I'm just seeing the smack onomatopoeia, and I'm just thinking, did the diamond dogs get a whack at Temp- uh, Capper? No, no, no. But anywho, the plan almost fails because Capper's a cat and the diamond dogs want a piece of him. And Princess Luna and Stygian are kind are trying to decide what we do because things like seems like the plan is gonna fail. Until Trixie comes in and tells the dog that uh Capper is her familiar and tells them to back off or else she'll make them outside dogs. And with that the diamond dogs run away. Is there anything with outside dogs? Like, was that? Uh, you know, sometimes you give dog a bop on the nose to tell them to stop a bad behavior. Hmm. All right. So, anywho, I'm going to take that as a cue to pause. So, Tara, what do you think? Okay, well, I do like how... Well, first off, I love that huge art of Daybreaker and Tempest facing each other with the art and the flashy fire and spikes flying, and it's just very pretty to look at. And I also like, too, how uh, it's not like, um, I, I wouldn't say a primal thing, but I like how Capra addresses that. He's like, hey, come on, just because I'm a cat and you're a dog doesn't mean we have to ever go back to the primal thing. And like, nope, we must because we're dogs and you're a cat, you know, speciesism right there. <laughs> But then Trixie comes along with a rolled-up newspaper. It's like, oh, yeah, the one weakness that that dogs fear. And it actually works. They start running away. <laughs> There's not really much to say, but I just love the art style, and I love that little piece of comedy, how the dogs run away with the newspaper, and she was going to make them outside dogs. Mm, all right, all right. Uh, so, Will, you? Well, there is one other weakness for dogs, and that is bath time. Trixie could have threatened them with a, with a bath. No! We're diamond dogs. We especially don't like bath time. You're out. Run away. Run away. Uh, I thought dogs love water. No? Some do. They love playing in water, but get them in a bath? No, thank you. (laughs) They know what's coming. You're about to suds them up in weird chemicals, and they're not going to get to splash or run around. (laughs) You'll make them hold still. It's terrible. Terrible from their perspective. (laughs) All right, then. But it does speak, uh, well, Stygian and Luna are trying to think about the most cautious uh, course of action to fix this. Uh, Trixie just goes. She's just impulsive. And that works here, but we're about to see it work badly. Very badly. Hmm. Soon, 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 soon. So I'm going to carry on. So with that, the Diamond Dogs run away and Kepper thanks Trixie for the save. And when they notice a hall or a gallery for uh, magicians to do stuff, like it's called Showtime, Music, Magic, and Mayhem, uh, Trixie is insulted that she didn't get an invite. Uh, Princess Luna has to stop her and tell her that you're a very important part of the team and we need you. Uh, I know you're really amazing and I hope that you are able to perform your magic for the masses. But right now, we need you. And with that, um, Trixie holds her tongue for a bit and uh, follows the group. And with that, we are brought to another scene where Tempest is caught by the guards and is introduced to Princess Ares. So Princess Ares wants to know what's going on and who you're working for but somehow she is transported to her childhood where we get to see all the cute little babies like baby Luna and baby Trixie and baby Stitch and baby Capper. Ah, they're so cute! But in this scene, Luna and Trixie wants to play ball with Tempest but somehow the ball is thrown too far and she is attacked by Princess Ares and it seems that 
Tempest is stuck in a nightmare. Ares wants to go and find out what's going on and tells Daybreaker to stay in the room with Tempest. So we go to the next scene and it seems that Luna and her group are stopped by some guards. They are guarding the staircase to the throne room. Um, previously there weren't many and the plan was to use Trixie's illusionary spell to get past them but now there are so many that they're just blocking the route to the throne room. So now they need to find a plan to get the guards away. And Trixie has the plan of, oh, she sees a poster and the poster is a poster of Twilight, the great and powerful Twily. Oh God. So Trixie is not happy with this and challenge Twily to a, what was it called again? Uh, uh, illusion off and finally accepts and I'm gonna pause here for a bit uh, Tara what about you what do you think didn't I go first last time really oh, okay sorry um, Silver what do you think well the impulsiveness that helped save Capper and crew is now undermining Trixie's efforts uh, as she's just running off and causing trouble so that's the you know you take the good you take the bad Take it all, and there you have the facts of Trixie. <laughs> the facts of Trixie. But uh, it is, this is going to set up probably one of the most delightful moments of the of the series. But that's next issue. Okay. Not now. Not now. It's in, it's all in the anticipation. Ooh, I don't know what's going to happen next. To be honest. Well, uh, I've just given you something to look to which you can look forward. Oh, already then. Yes, I am. I am excellent hype man. Okay. I'm the, I'm the best at what I do, which is hype, 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 hype. Yeah. I guess I should comment. In any dimension, the guards suck, because this unintended action actually does draw the guards away, and you're just like, ah, is there any dimension where the guards are actually useful? Is there any time where they don't epically fail? There's no, no, there's not. They are bad, and you should feel bad when hiring them. Yeah. No comments. Um, they, they, they want to do, they have a job, yeah. Firebrand would watch this, and he'd just be in a rage. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, man, overall, like, um... What, overall, they're bad at their job? I mean, the, <laughs> I mean, the, the parts that we're talking about here. Well, isn't that all we've really talked about? That tr they go, the guards are there. Trixie sees her rival once again and is like, See ya, I'm gonna go what, whoop me some Twilight. What about Tempest and Ares and her nightmare thing? Well, I mean, well, it's making her relive the day she lost her horn, except now we have Nightmare Night Babies, which is probably the next great franchise. <laughs> Actually, it, is that I, an actual I, thing? No. Oh. I don't read the well, comics. I don't know if Nightmare Night Babies was a thing or not. <laughs> cool. It 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 could be. I mean, we've had Muppet Babies and Tiny Toons Babies. Give it enough. Give it a little wait, more wait, time. And Tiny Toons Babies was a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that now. Oh god. Actually, from what I've heard too, I heard that they're going to be doing a spinoff series or a prequel series. I don't know of the Madagascar characters back when they were young, like babies. Oh god, dream. Folks, please stop. So yeah, basically, when you're when you're not sure what to do with the franchise next, babies are apparently the way to go. Again, ah, eat a baby. <laughs> the other other white meat. Oh god, it's no. funny how this is becoming more relevant with every podcast. No, no. <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, Tara, what about you? Oh, I do. Okay, so I do like how at first. When Trix Trixie's like, this one will not stand. They have magic here. I am the best magician ever. And, and at first, Luna's like, please, we need you. And Trixie's like, okay, yeah, I'll, I, I'll stick with you guys. Because, you know, we're, we're on this mission to the very end. You know, very short thing, but a very nice one. And I know we went through the whole topic back in um, the Summer Sunset back where the guards are terrible at their job, no matter where they are. Eh? <laughs> but it's also kind of interesting how... 
And also funny too, how Tempest was about to tell Aeris the joke about uh, how, that she's in it, why the chicken crossed the road. But then she asked why the pony crossed the chicken. And then the nightmare ensues. We get the little cute little babies where they're, they're all so cute. Even Capu playing with the ball of yarn. And you could tell that Tempest really doesn't want this dream to continue, but Eris is in control, and so she's forced. She's even forced to go into the cave because she couldn't stop herself. And then Eris starts thinking, hmm, maybe I don't want to get rid of this staff. This staff is so much fun. And then and then she says that one little sentence that, you know, just asking real cre- credits, where she asks, where she says, come to me, my little ponies. <laughs> hmm. I-, I wonder who is she talking to about that? That line's confused me. <laughs> but then after, like I said before, how Trixie said that she was going to stick around, she was able to hold her will against herself. Now, it could be part of Eris's trick. I'm not sure. I haven't read the next comic. Maybe he'll just it. Maybe it's just a coincidence. But it's just, a, it has to be a coincidence, or maybe it is a trick. I don't know. But how wild of a sudden Twilight's here in this dimension, and it's called the Great and Powerful Twily. <laughs> And it's basically taking Trixie's title, so that gets on Trixie's nerves, and that's when she decides, nope, sorry guys, you're on your own, I have to reclaim my title. <laughs> but you know, honestly, I have to say that this was kind of Trixie's plan. Like, they did mention uh, finding a way to get the guards to leave their station or their post, and Trixie's the one to do it. Like, she succeeded in the task at hand. So I wouldn't say that this is Trixie kind of doing her own thing, um, just being impulsive and whatnot. Okay, it is, but to me, this is her way of getting the guards away, which kind of a gamble that it worked. Mm-hmm. And like Silver mentioned, the guards are idiots. See, I, I can't give Trixie the credit of planning this. I think it's just sort of act of foster coin. Wait, what? An act of foster corn. It's like act of God, but more relevant oh, to okay. the story. Okay, okay, yeah, Faust. All right. So I, I, I don't think Trixie's playing anything. This is pure. This is pure happenstance. Which, in some ways, you're going up against the god of chaos. Why not let the chaos uh, unfold? True, true. So, anywho, um, after this destruction happens, uh, the heroes or the remaining heroes have to split up because. There's two paths to the top. Uh, Luna suggests that he takes Stijin with him because he has magic to protect him with. And they arrive at the throne room. And once they're there, they see an empty throne and they don't see anything except a trap because they fall into Ares' clutches. Something like that. And with that, the comic ends, and we get to see Stijin's really strange face. Really, really strange face. So, I'm going to wrap this up. <sighs> okay, uh, Silver, uh, what do you think, and final thoughts? Well, this is sort of, this is an in-transit issue. I mean, of course they're going to leave off where, where they're facing the greatest possible danger, i.e. Eris has come for them, uh, and, you know, they're about to be caught. So that's the hook to keep you reading for the next issue. On its own, this issue is a, a bridge. It just gets you from point A to point B within the story. There's not a lot to really stand out on its own. I mean, I'm sure there's the trauma that uh, Tempest is facing. Funny that no one says fizzle pop to her. <laughs> it's prob- probably for the best. You'd probably punch them. <laughs> but... It's really not an issue that, okay, how do I describe this? You wouldn't, I'd ask why anyone would try to start reading issue three of a series. But I am saying if you were trying to show why this series is so much fun, this probably isn't the issue to do it. Because it's it's leaning very heavily on what comes next. True, 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 true. Like issue three here is just the setup. Like, like you mentioned earlier before, um, it's the part where everybody fails and they have to rise up to the occasion and whatnot. No, I think that's issue four where they rise up. Uh, issue three is where they just fails straight up. Anything yes, else? Yes, epic fail. Yep. Anything else to add, Silver? Baby ponies are cute. Foals and, and kitten capper and all that good stuff. 
but mostly it's just looking forward to what's next. And it is the background references, the cameos by the villains, the Alicorn amulets on the stage. And Twilight does look pretty good in the sorcerer's cape. Yeah. And I, I like to point out something. Um, there's Tentabus at one scene. I think it's the scene where Tempus is getting ready to shoot her magic in at the wheel. Notice it? Uh, let me. Oh, I thought that was uh, Luna in the in the distance or like behind. Yeah, it's the quote unquote the shadow pony thingy. But yeah, I guess it could be the Tentabus. Yeah, yeah, that does look like the Tentabus, but. It's not saying anything with the other get him. Yeah, we... Then again, it has no mouth, yet it must scream. <laughs> uh, that series, that series is just silly. Uh, is that about it, Silver? That'll do it for me. All right, then. And Taro, how about you? I really liked it. I mean, it's basically like what you get in the heist setup for a movie or an episode, or in this case, a comic, except this is a continuation where the the, fi- the plan finally ensues. They're inside the building. It's like, all right, let the plan begin. And then all of a sudden, one thi- then all of a sudden everyone starts getting separated. Tempest is separated from them. And then later on, Trixie gets separated from them. And then all of a sudden, Capper and uh, Stygian get separated from Luna. And, so, and then later on, it's like, ooh, how's it going to end this time? Because this is a world of ponies where, you know, everything's all magical and we got all these villains in one building so there's a bit of a twist not really a twist but more of on the situation of what's happening here because there's so many things that could happen in this kind of situation I don't know if that made sense I, I, I can dig it I can dig it but I do I do like how this turns out and how Eris is having second thoughts about selling the the nightmares uh, Luna's magic and Twilight like I know Silver pointed out but I'll say it too Twilight does look good in a cape and a hat <laughs> alrighty then alrighty then and as for me, this comic was fun, fun to read because of, well, we get to see things in action. We get to see things, or we get to see the ball start rolling. And it's not much to say because this is just, like when Silver mentioned, it's just the bridge between this and what's going to happen next because most of the meat of the story is going to happen in the next two issues. This one is just kind of the in-between. It's, I would say, the appetizer. The mushroom soup with your garlic bread before your main course. And before you have chocolate chips for dessert. Uh, chocolate chip <laughs> ice cream. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. But like I was saying, uh, yes, this is just in-between. Uh, I love the uh, callbacks, the cameos and whatnot. Uh, we, we get to see... Uh, been, uh, who was that pony from Rara? Spinkin Bells. Oh, 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 Sven Gallop? Ah, Sven Gallop, yes. We got to see Sven Gallop, uh, Rarity's rival, quote unquote rival. Uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. This is a lot of fun. And also the Goblin. <laughs> uh, yeah, who, is that Goblin from the comics? Because I didn't know who that was. Yeah, the Goblin. Oh, yes. Silver, so go ahead. Tony Fleece drew this, and he, he drew the Goblins for Rainbow Dash's micro. And I think he became smitten with them because they they make a cameo in the background of every comic he puts together. Oh, uh, yeah. They're, they, they're of uh, Hard of Us. They're Tony Fleece's. Uh, sorry. Um, they are to Tony Fleece's. Uh, hmm, how do I put this? Uh, if you notice Andy Price, when he draws comics, he always puts the Watchmen's? The Watchmonies? The Watcher Pony. Yeah. Watcher Pony, yes. It, they're. they're a uh, kind of gray tone with a tr- uh, with a hat and a trench coat, so you can always distinguish them from afar. And he's been putting them since issue one. And with Tony, Tony is it? Yeah, with Tony. Yeah, he always puts in the goblins. It's kind of his gimmick. <laughs> there you go. And is that about it? Like. Actually, I I have another thing I just uh, I just noticed, and I don't know if this is also from a comic that I don't know of. Why is it when Twilight sees Trixie, she calls her Princess Trixie? Ah, uh, that one. You think it's Silva? That's from uh, the Reflections comic arc, in which the main six went to an alternate universe where there was a good King Sombra, and basically the morality of every character was flipped. So Twilight never became an Alicorn; she was part of the Mean Six. Instead, Princess Trixie is the Alicorn Princess of Humility. Oh. 
Ah, yes, I now remember. Uh, in that is insert issue, they had the whole world kind of topsy turvy where Princess Trixie is Princess of Humility. We get good Chrysalis. Was it Chrysalis still? Yep, it was Chrysalis is the Queen of Love. Yeah, Trixie is Queen of Love. We got Discord. He is the hero of what now? He's Mr. Hero Guy. Flim and Flam are uh, chief justices. Yep, yep. Derpy is queen of uh, is princess of knowledge. <laughs> yep. Wait, is that all? Six? And well, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think One that's more. it. And Som- and Sombra is the protective king of the land. He's also in love with uh, the regu- uh, the princess Celestia we know. Oh yeah, and oh god. Too bad that story plot didn't go anywhere. Mm. It is cast into the void, unfortunately. Oh, man. Uh, I remember a lot of people hating on it because of... You know what? Silver, why did people hate on it? Because to me, I kind of like it. It was pretty nice. But why did people hate it a lot? Well, for some, it's the idea of forcing a romance on Celestia. It's also the fact that basically... Because of her actions, she nearly doomed the universe. Two universes, in fact. And it's also, well, you're you're making a very bold move by uh, installing this into the fiction of the world. And plus, it's also the knowledge that this is going to go nowhere fast, unfortunately. Uh, the knowledge that we're never going to get a follow-up with uh, good, king, good now, now corrupted King Sombra. Mm, true, but I don't know. I mean, it was uh, a lot of people hate it because they. Uh, it's the for me. I think it's the whole. Oh, Princess Celestia is pure. She's pure and good. She can never have a love, a lover. No, no, no. She must. She mustn't. No, kind of mentality because I I I feel it that way. And it's kind of annoying because people have a hard time to create stories if they can't just do stories. Like, if Princess Celeste wants to be in love, what's wrong? I can't speak for anyone else on that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Probably it's the way it's done. Who knows? Uh, we may never know. True that. But anywho, uh, with that, comic ends. So, uh, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I believe it is time to return to the show proper as we talk about we've got celestia's retirement to work towards then she can date whoever she wants ah, true that true <laughs> that but i don't think we have a celestia episode of a while or ever because next episode is going to be something else it's going to be dragon dropped where rarity is losing spike to gabby and the shipping wars shall commence once again Aha. yeah man yeah man oh man i i am so excited for this one because there's a Griffin the episode and it's Gabby. Me like the Gabbies. Yeah, and also shipping. <laughs> oh, boys, this is going to be fun. So anywho, uh, that will be next week's project. And well, I guess we'll just have to wait because I'm so excited to talk about it if I have to wait. <laughs> so anyway, if you guys have any questions, questions or suggestions for the show, you can catch us at pmbshowgmail.com. Or you can contact us at thebshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is not at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on Patreon and Ko-fi under Silver Quill, where you can support my videos. Uh, if you do a search for you on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear. And you can find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday, posting either a comic review or editorial. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Or they could just do a Google search of that name, and I'll be on all of those platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on Live.com. Links are in the show notes. 
If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review a discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the VS Show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, who wants to go and play let? Like check, whatever it is. Nope, all of it's rigged. Nope, we can't stop here. This is bad pony country. <laughs> Plus, I don't do gambling on the games, only battles. My gambling comes in the form of loot boxes. <laughs> oh no, silver, not the loot boxes. No! <laughs> <laughs>